Okay, well, it's a rainy day here at Sloan Implement, and we want to go through the new Gen 4 and the new S700 combines. Today I'm in an S780, and it is equipped with the new Combine Advisor package, and that's the package that has the Auto Maintain and the Auto Active Terrain, as well as the Harvest Smart package. And the Auto Maintain is basically, once you get the combine set, it will maintain your losses and, and crack corn and that kind of thing for you and it will make adjustments to try to maintain what you set up in the beginning once you got the combine initially set. So we're going to kind of go through the Gen 4 and uh, the navigation on it and I've got some home pages already set up so you might want to take note of kind of where things are laid out if you like it and you can always uh, customize that as with any Gen 4 you can pretty well customize it to however you would like to, to see it. But uh, we're going to focus on the Gen 4 mainly today and the new hydro handle. And uh, that way you'll have, a, you'll have an idea of what to do when you first get in the field and, and, uh, or if you need a refresher uh, from when uh, we came out and went through the machine with you. So the first thing I've got here set up is the main home screen that we typically like to set up. And over here on the left, we've got uh, your client farm and field. You can see we've got some demo just three and three and eight in there. We just pick some numbers to put in there. Uh, we also have our crop type and our variety. We've got our header control set up here. We've got our grain tank level set up here and that, that's also where we can go in. You'll see in a moment where we can uh, adjust our moisture correction as well. Over here up at the top, I've got my acre counter and then I've got an instant moisture and an instant yield readout for me as well. Now in this big area, I've got all my settings, so I've got my rotor speed, my concave, my fan, my chaffer, and my sieve settings. And I also have uh, the back shaft speed or the header speed uh, for my header, whether it be uh, a corn head or some kind of uh, bean platform. And uh, down along the bottom, I've got my row of quick buttons, and I can use those at any time. I also have below the screen, I have these hard buttons that uh, are also very handy and we'll kind of go through what each one of those does. So kind of some housekeeping or, or basic navigation. Up in the right hand corner, I've got some arrows. I've got a left and a right arrow. And I'll use these to navigate between my home pages. So I can scroll forwards or I can scroll backwards within my home pages as I choose. Now another thing I can do on that is up here where it has the, the name of the home page, if I touch that, it's going to bring up a listing of all of my home pages, and then I just simply select the one that I want to use, and it'll take me directly to it. So if I've got multiple home pages, and I don't want to scroll through all of them to find the one I want, I just simply hit the top line here, and it'll pop up that menu, and then I can select the one that I want. So while we're in here, over here on the left-hand side, if I touch this area where it says location, this is my farms and fields, I can simply touch that and it would bring up my listing of my client, my farm, and my field, and I can go through that list that's preloaded, or I can come down and add a new one if I so choose. So I don't really have to hit the menu button or anything like that, like I used to with the 2630. I can simply touch the area of the screen that I want to use, and it'll take me directly into that menu. So that's where I'd find my farms and fields. My variety setup is going to be right here, so I can simply select that. Here's where I would load my variety in. Now I can pick my single variety from a list. You know, if I don't have variety locator set up, I just need to add in a variety or something. Maybe I'm doing some custom work. But if I have a variety locator map that I've set up in the op center or in, through Apex, I simply would select the variety locator map. I would select the drop down and then choose that map uh, from the list. Now that's going to show up as a background map on my uh, on my map page. So I'll be able to see my variety map in the background of my yield map, which is kind of nice because then I can see what variety I'm actually in, I can see it on the map, and then my yield map is basically going to paint over it, so to speak. So my header controls, right now I don't actually have a header connected, uh, but if I touch that header, it brings up all my sensitivity settings here in the center. I also have my four aft tilt, as well as my back shaft speed. Now if I had a corn head connected, it would also show my deck plates. If I had a draper connected, it would show my reel position or my automatic reel position uh, buttons, as well as my draper speed. Now up here where it says unknown header, 
This is where I would put in my header width. So if I've got a 35 foot draper, that's where I would enter that. Or if I had a 12 row corn head, that's where I would enter that as well. I simply select it and then I put my width in right there. This is also where I'm gonna set my, my record stop height. So that's that point where the header is above that point, it will turn recording off, or if it's below that point, it will simply turn the recording on. Now to set that, typically I'll set my number one on my hydro handle, my number one preset. And when I have that set, then I'll simply lower the head, you know, approximately six inches. And then that's where I'll set that. So I know for sure that every time I raise the head with number one, it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna shut off that, uh, it's going to shut off that recording. So we'll exit out of there. So that's my header control right here. Uh, one other thing in there, if I go down to the auto control, this is where I would turn on all my header sensitivity. So if I want my header height resume on, my lateral tilt turned on, and I want my header control on, I would turn those on. Maybe I don't want the automatic deck plates or the automatic reel speed. Those would show up down here with the respective head as, as I have it connected to the combine. And then I could simply turn those on or off. Right now, I've got the four aft resume down here. I want that turned off. So I'll just leave it off for now. So that's, that's kind of like the check boxes in the S600 uh, or the very top corner post in a 70 series. That's where you would turn on what header control function should be active and working at that point in time. Okay, so the next one down is our grain handling. So if I touch that, it's gonna show me how full my grain tank is. And I mentioned before, here's my moisture correction. So I can touch my moisture correction, and then I can right here, put in that plus one or minus two or whatever it is I need to get it to match the elevator. So if the elevator is two points higher than the combine, I need to put a plus two in there. If the elevator is two points less than the combine, I would need to put a negative two uh, in there. Most guys don't use the moisture alarm, but you can set up any type of minimum or maximum moisture that if it goes below or above those settings, it'll throw an alarm and let you know that you're in corn, either wetter or drier than what you want to be in. Again, typically most guys leave that off, uh, just one less beep uh, or alarm that's going to be going off. So we'll back out of there. Notice I've been hitting a little X to get out of a screen, and I can do that at any time. I hit the X to, to back out of what I'm up to. So up on the top, these are my counters. And again, I can set those to whatever if I just touch one. And then I can hit change reading. Uh, I can change it to the work monitor or the machine monitor. And then I've got a list of a bunch of different things in here that I can scroll through and set them up to. I'm going to leave it on uh, acres for right now. But in your combine, you can set it up to basically what you want. Notice I've got moisture and yield on these other two buttons in here. So this main screen, this main area here, all of my settings are here. So my rotor setting, my concave gap, my fan setting, my chaffer, and my sieve. I've also got my back shaft. So for example, if I wanted to make a change to my chaffer, I would simply touch the screen and it's gonna bring up all my settings. So if I wanna change my chaffer, I could simply hit the plus sign and I just open my chaffer up to 20. Okay, so down at the bottom, I also have my outside configuration now it's not gonna do any changing for me, it's, but it's gonna tell me everything that I need to do on the outside of the machine to get it changed over. Um, here's my loss monitor where I can set my loss monitor. So once I get the combine set and I wanna set the loss monitor up on the corner post, I would hit the set to current and then that's gonna bring that center bar up to the middle and then it gives me a number in there that uh, I can use to make sure that I've got my loss monitor set where it's at. Up at the top, if I want to change some of the settings, so let's say I want to go to dry corn, I can hit OK. And what it's done is it's put the, the book settings over here on the right for dry corn. Now if I have my separator running and I've got my engine at full throttle, I can simply hit this OK button and the combine will set the will set those settings to the book settings. So it'll they'll start flashing and uh, you'll see that they're changing and it will go ahead and set them to what the book recommends for a starting point. So I'm gonna cancel out of that for now since I don't have the engine running. Uh, but as you can see, you know, your, your concave, your rotor, your fan, your chaffer, and your sieve are all in here and it can all be changed right in here. The cob conditions and those kinds of things, if I change those, that's just gonna change that book setting. 
So maybe if I've got a, a tougher cob or something, it might put a little bit more aggressive rotor speed or concave setting to try to go ahead and make sure that I get all that corn threshed. So that's what I'm doing when I change it. But right now we're just gonna leave them on normal for this, for this video. Okay, so that's kind of my main run screen. Now we're gonna focus on these bottoms, uh, buttons here on the bottom. So over here on the left, I've got setup. Okay, you probably saw this screen earlier when I, when I went into uh, my client farm and field, which I can still do right here. Okay, I can also set up my combine. So if I touch my combine, there's the serial number. There's all my GPS offsets, which those are, um, those are in there from the factory. And then I also have my header offsets as well. Um, so those will also all be in there from the factory. So again, here's my crop type, like my variety and then whatever units I want. If I hit harvest setup, this is where I can go in and just check everything and make sure in one spot that everything is good to go and that I haven't missed something or I haven't forgot something. And again, as with anything on a Gen 4, if I just simply touch that area of the screen, I can go right in there and make those changes that I want to do. So pretty handy right here. Uh, just kind of a summary page to let me know that, hey, I've got everything set up and I'm ready to go. So what I might have caught, maybe I had a 35 foot head and I noticed it was only set to 30. And, and that way I'm not going to have any whoopsies or hiccups if I check this, check this screen to make sure it's all good to go. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and back on out of here. So I also have my recording light right here. I've got my auto track pie. So once I get my AB line set, this will have the two pieces of pie. This is where I would get my third piece of pie. And then I can engage my auto steer on the hydro handle. My guidance. So this is where I would go in to set my um, AB lines or get my row sense ready to go. Quick line. Uh, that's one that some guys use and maybe they're setting a an angle for cutting beans. You can simply hit, go to quick line, set your A, and you just drive in the direction that you want it to be for your angle. And then it'll go ahead and auto set the B for you and then turn your second piece of pie on. And then uh, you can go ahead and, and engage your auto steer from there. Swap track, if you've got lines preloaded in your, in your display, then uh, you can go in there and quickly swap between different lines using the swap track. The ICA2, we're going to go into detail in that, but that's that combine advisor package that I mentioned at the beginning to where the combine will maintain the settings and your losses and uh, grain quality for you once you get it set. The residue button, uh, if you've got a power cast tailboard, you can put a left or right bias in your power cast tailboard and um, this would be to swap it. So we'll go in one way, I might have a crosswind from the north and I need, to be, I need to be biased to the north, but when I turn around and go back the other direction, well, now the crosswind is blowing the other way, so I would need to bias the combine the opposite direction as well. Overlap control, you probably remember this from your 2600 or your 2630. Uh, on those displays, it was actually a checkbox, and that was the part where maybe you're only picking six rows because you're doing point rows, and it would automatically reduce the header width by, by two rows. Um, that way, that way you don't have a, a, an incorrect yield reading because you're only picking six, but the combine thinks you're picking eight. This is going to take care of that and automatically reduce that header width. My menu button, uh, we'll go into that more later, but it's a lot like on a 2630. It takes you into other screens and other menus and other buttons that you can get to. One thing I want to point out though is on the Gen 4, I really don't need to use that button too often unless I'm doing some kind of calibration. Along with all these buttons along the bottom of the screen here, these hard buttons, as well as these soft buttons, and the ability to just touch on the screen where I want to work, I don't really need to go into that menu button as often as maybe what I did if it was a 2630 or something of that nature. So we're going to go ahead and go to the next page for right now. Okay, this is what I set up as a map page. I've got my large map in the center, and I've got some totals over here for my field. And then I also have a, a quick point to set my track or center my track when I'm running guidance. So that's kind of what I call page two, or I've actually labeled it mapping. And because of that, um, you're going to want to have your big map on here. And if I want to change to something like moisture or a variety map, or if I want to change the yield map, I would simply hit this and then it will show you right here in the center what you're actually changing to. 
Now there's a menu button down here that kind of looks like. If I hit that, this is where I can change my coverage. So I can change uh, the colors of the map. So I would hit this and then I could go up here. Again, if I had a head on it and I was harvesting, I could set that those colors to match what my map looked like. So that's my mapping page. The other page that I have set up, this is for that combine advisor. Now with that package, I actually have live cameras to where I can look in the clean grain and then I can also look in the tailings. And these will update about once every second or so and give you a live feed as to what that grain sample looks like or what kind of trash or grain volume you're running in your tailings. And the good news about these cameras is they can actually identify whether it's a whole kernel, a broken kernel, if it's trash, if it's a, you know, a piece of a cob, it can identify those things and sort them out and help you understand what you've got in your grain quality. Now, obviously you can look in the window on the grain tank still, but it's pretty handy to be able to see, you know, what is my grain sample actually looking like? Uh, a lot of times in that window in the cab, that's where a lot of the brokens run to because it's, you know, they're the lightest and they run to the edge the quickest because they kind of ride on top of the other grain. And so this is going to give me kind of a live feed. Now the grain, well, the clean grain sample is taken in the moisture sensor. So as that moisture sensor is taking its, its uh, sample, you're looking at the sample that the moisture sensor has. The tailings, it's on the side of the tailings. So as it's coming up that uh, elevator, it's going to dump in to a, a sample, sample trough and then, a, and then the auger is going to put it back in the return. But you're going to be able to see if you're running a heavy volume of trash or a heavy volume of grain or vice versa in, in, that, uh, in that tailing system. So we're going to go through Combine Visor a little bit more a little bit later, but I do have a home page set up so I can see those cameras and I can get directly to my Combine Advisor page. The last page I have set up is pretty handy. A lot of guys like this. It's kind of what I call a totals page. It's called a work monitor. Um, so over here, I, right here in the middle, I've got all those area and dry weight and averages and all those things that we like to see and know as we're harvesting that field. I also have a load set up over here on the left. And then I've got kind of some acre counters and some other productivity information over here on the right. And those are going to kind of summarize or take care of all of our home pages. I don't recommend getting a whole lot more home pages. You can put in up to 10. Um, you get more than three or four in there, it really starts to get cumbersome as trying to remember, hey, where was that located? Or you spend a lot of time kind of scrolling pages to get it all set up uh, or to find the information that you're looking for. So anyway, those are kind of the four pages that I like to set up. Now I do recommend the extend monitor, which will mount up above where our 2630 a lot of times used to mount. And I can actually have a, one of those home pages on that extend monitor as well. So maybe I have this page right here on my main armrest display, and then maybe I have my mapping page up on my extended monitor. Now the extended monitor is just like having two computer screens hooked up to your home computer. The extended monitor really doesn't have any memory or anything like that, but it is a touch screen and you can do things in, within that monitor, but it's all run through the 4600 and the server uh, brains that are connected to it uh, under the seat here. So anyway, we'll, uh, go into our main home screen here and uh, we'll go through some more of these buttons. So I talked about guidance. That's kind of the next one on the list here. I'm going to go into guidance. Okay. So over here on the left, here's where I can set up my guidance so I can set my track. So just like before I hit my track, I can put a new track in there. I can select my A plus heading or whatever it is I need to do. Set my A, set my B, set my A or put in my heading degrees or however it is you set your track. You can do that right in here simply by hitting that guidance page. I also have the on off or the steering on off button in here. My shift increments. So if I want to change my shift increments to two inches instead of one inch, I can do that right here. There's my center and my left and right tracking is right there. I've also have this setup button up here at the top. It's got an arrow with a dot on it. So if I touch that, here's where my row sense is going to be. So my row sense right now is off. Obviously I don't have a corn head on it. But if I wanted to go into the row sense, row sense status, it would, it, my calibration would be right here. So it would show my voltages of my sensor, and then I would have a calibration button right here. This is also where I have my offsets. So again, if that stalk of corn is kind of consistently leaning one way or the other, I can offset those sensors to where the combine will hold left or right for me. 
But that's all found in guidance and under the advanced settings up here uh, with the arrow and the dot. Now I want to talk about the hydro handle. Um, the hydro handle has changed tremendously from what we've had in the past. Uh, there are some similarities, but it has changed a lot. The look and feel of it is completely different. Now, if you've run a new R-Series sprayer for model year 18, you're familiar with this hydro handle as it's very similar to the one that's in there. But ergonomically, it is comfortable to hold, um, but it has changed quite a bit. First thing you'll probably notice is before, to come out of neutral, I actually had to move the handle left, or to the right, excuse me. Now I have to actually move it to the left uh, to come out of neutral. So that's going to be something that's going to take a little bit of time to get used to. My one, two, three buttons still operate as normal. My deck plates and my header speed are over here on this right, left hand button. Um, those also uh, will control my reel up and down and my reel fore and aft. My header up and down on my tilt right and left, that button is also similar as to where it was before and, as, and works exactly the same as it did before. My unloading auger, I still have a swing in and swing out and I have the unloading auger on button. Now notice there's a little LED light. So instead of the button itself having a light, it's, there's a little LED over here on the right hand side of it. Down below, I've got this auto button right here. So that's where I'm gonna be my resume switch for when I kick my auto steer on, when I make my turn and then head back the other way. Now I've got this little E button. I've got over here, I've got an A and a B button and then I've got a C and a D button over here. Uh, those are gonna be configurable. So letter E and then A, B, C and D over here on the right hand side are going to be configurable to, I can set them up about however I want. So one thing to note about that, I've got a lock button right here and I have to turn that lock off every time I turn the key on. Now that's a safety thing, you know, the deer isn't really sure how you've got that programmed and they don't want you um, starting the machine and, and accidentally, you know, injure somebody or tear up equipment um, by making a move that you weren't sure. Uh, what it was going to actually do. Again, they're configurable, so somebody who's not familiar with the machine or how you had it set up could potentially get in there and maybe move something uh, in an unexpected manner and uh, again, cause injury or, or damage some equipment. So you do have to unlock this every single time that you start the key or turn the key on. So over here on the left hand side or right hand side, excuse me, you've got the A button, the B button, the C button, and then the D button. So I'm gonna go down here on my armrest and I'm gonna hit the setup button. It's got the little arrow with the dot down here. And what that's gonna do is it brings up how all those buttons are configured. So you can see letter A is right here, letter B is right here, C is here, and D is here. So I'm gonna start with letter A. Now letter A and B for that matter are both momentary buttons. So they're just basically a single press. C and D are actually toggle switches. They're actually toggle switches. So they have a, a center and then a left and a right uh, actuation. There's also a little scroll wheel. Uh, it's down here on kind of on the front where your, where your index finger would rest uh, as you hold the hydro handle. And you can scroll with that wheel and you can also click that scroll wheel to do different things. So right now letter A is set up to slow down my draper. So if you're doing point rows, you know, in the past we've always said, hey, don't, don't take, you know, crop down one side of a draper because it potentially could throw it across the center of that center belt. And then the, the, the other side of the, the other side of the belt uh, would grab it and pull it under. So then letter C right now, remember that's one of those toggles and it's the top toggle here on the hydro handle. That's going to be to pitch your fore and aft of your feeder house. So if I wanna pitch my feeder house forward or pitch it back, I'm gonna do that with that toggle on letter C. That scroll wheel I talked about, I've got it set up to where when I turn that scroll wheel on the hydro handle, it's actually gonna scroll through my home pages. So I can go through those four home pages, I can just turn that wheel on the hydro handle and it'll, it'll skip through page after page uh, so I don't have to actually take my hand off the hydro handle to scroll the pages. I also have a function where I can click that scroll wheel. I just push in on it and it will exit me out of a page. So basically it's the same as pressing the yellow, uh, yellow X button up here uh, on the right side. Now currently I don't have letter B, D, or E set to anything else. Um, you can explore that. 
as you wish and uh, set them to however you want. You just basically touch letter B and it'll give you a menu and you can select certain things uh, that you want it to do. So maybe on residue, maybe I want to have residue swap. So again, with that Powercast tailboard, if I had that bias one way or the other, I could simply hit letter B over here and it would swap it left to right. Um, I really don't like having a lot of those the same thing or having A and B do uh, one do one, one do the other, simply because as you're operating it, if you meant to hit letter A and you accidentally hit letter B or vice versa, uh, again, you potentially could act activate something that you didn't necessarily intend to. Um, so I typically leave these blank, the B, D, and E, E especially, because you can see where E is located. It's right here on the hydro handle, right next to your auto steer button. So I can see as I'm turning and I want to hit auto steer, I accidentally hit letter E. Well, if that was, you know, to shift my line or something, well, I kept hitting letter E and I've moved my line. And then I realize, oh, I need to turn auto steer on and I, I need to hit the other button. Well, I've moved my line and now my auto steer is off. So B, D, and E, I usually leave blank. This is how I typically set up A, C, and then the scroll wheel. There's also another button here. And these are the buttons over here on the right hand side. So I have toggle one, toggle two, button three, button four. Now they work exactly like A, B, C, and D do on the hydro handle. Um, however, um, they're over here on the right hand side. They also have a lock on them and uh, I can set those up. So right now, number one is set to change my um, auto steer line so I can bump it left or right. Number four is set up to center my auto steer line. Um, you know, center track that we used to have just like on our 2630. So again, I can configure these just like I configure them on my hydro handle. Now I can't have one function on multiple buttons. It's on one button and one button only. If I change it to another button, it's gonna be deleted off of the other button. So that's kind of how you set up all your controls on the hydro handle. I encourage you to get in there and play with it a little bit uh, before you get ready to go to the field, just so you're comfortable with it and have the button set to what you feel is appropriate for what you're doing. So also down on the armrest, I still have my header scroll right here. So this is my active header control. And then I also have my real speed functions. My uh, header switch and separator switch have not changed. My concave rotor fan, chaffer, and sieve buttons are still over here. Um, they've kind of been made smaller and moved to the right a little bit of where they used to be. Um, I also have that, that bias for my Powercast tailboard swap button. I've got one of those over here too. Uh, throttle, pretty self-explanatory, as well as the park and, and the shift buttons uh, as well. So again, a lot of similarities, but a few changes as well. So now I want to dive into the integrated combine adjust. And this is probably the, the biggest change that they've made on the S700 other than putting the Gen 4 on the armrest. So I'm going to go into my ICA2. Now ICA2 simply means integrated combine adjust two. So it's the second version of it. Now the first one came out in 2014 and that was that little eye at the bottom of the seven inch display on the S600 machines. And uh, I mean, a lot of times it would flash yellow or red at you. And it, you, if you hit that button, you, it would walk you through maybe how to help tweak the combine or how to, how to help change a setting to make your combine perform better. So that's still available if you don't if you don't have the combine advisor package, that's still standard equipment. If you have the combine advisor package, that's also included with it. So we're going to go into our ICA2 button here real quick. We're going to hit that. And this is kind of our ICA2 main page. So the one I want to look at for right now is our optimized performance. And this is going to be again like that little eye that we had back on the model year 14 and newer machines in the S600 series. So I'm going to go to optimize. And it's, it's going to ask me, basically, what issues am I seeing? So I'm going to say, okay, I've got a grain quality problem. So maybe you're seeing more cracked corn than you'd like to see. So you select grain quality and you hit next. So now it says, okay, well, what kind of grain quality? Well, I'm going to say I've got cracked corn. Okay. So now I hit next. And it's going to give me a recommendation of increasing my concave clearance by plus six. If I think that's a good idea, I'm simply going to hit apply and the combine will go ahead and open my concave up approximately six millimeters or six points. So if I was at 20 
If I was at 20, it would go to 26. Or if I was at 30, it would go to 36, so on and so forth. Once I hit apply, again, it's gonna to try to make that, and then it's gonna watch for a little bit and see if it sees any improvement um, in, those, in that grain quality issue. And it's gonna ask me, the operator, if I made improvement. It's gonna have a green check mark um, if it helped it and fixed it. It's gonna have an up arrow that's gonna be green for helped it but didn't fix it. I'm gonna have a red X, means you made it worse, and then I'll have kind of a gray equal sign that really says, eh, I really didn't make any change. So then I can go through this and whether it's a grain loss issue, so again, I can select grain loss and do the same thing. I got separator loss and it's gonna say, okay, speed your rotor up 40 RPMs. And I can continue to go through this, this, um, this program until I get the combine set to where I'm happy with its performance. Okay, so again, that's called ICA and that's the optimized performance. So again, it's something that we've had in the past. It's a little more user friendly now. And um, that's, uh, that's probably the first thing we wanna do is get our combine set to where we're happy with its performance. And once we get the combine set, we need to set our priorities. So grain loss, broken grain, foreign material or trash, and then straw quality. We need to rank those as what's most important. This is typically what we see uh, guys setting them at. Sometimes trash will trump broken grain, but typically uh, cracked corn is above foreign material and grain loss is always number one because we want to keep the machine, uh, keep all the grain in the machine. So to do that, I just simply touch the area. And then if I wanted to move one up or down, I would select broken grain. I'm going to move it down and move foreign material or up, or I can put broken grain back at the top and, and leave it set as that. But those, those are going to determine what adjustments the combine makes and what, recommenda what recommendations it makes uh, as it sees issues uh, throughout the day, okay? Once I get the combine set, so again, it's important to understand that the combine is not going to set itself. You still have to set the combine. You still have to you know, get it set to where the losses on the ground are acceptable, the, the grain quality is acceptable, so on and so forth. You still have to get it set to where you're happy with it. Now the optimized performance could kind of help you get there and give you suggestions to get there, but you still have to set the combine, okay? Once I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit set performance target and I'm gonna turn on auto maintain. Now what that's gonna do is when I hit set performance target, that's gonna go in and it's gonna look for about the next 15 minutes or so. The, it says a range of five to 20 minutes. Typically it's about 15 minutes and if you're shelling corn um, or cutting beans and you're doing half mile throughs, that's about 15 minutes to do a complete round. So about the next round or so, it's gonna be learning what you said was okay. So again, I've got it optimized, I, I set my performance, and then the combine's gonna learn, okay, what losses are okay? What kind of grain quality is okay? So it's gonna use those cameras to look at the grain quality and say, okay, he said about he said the grain quality is good, so it's going to kind of measure what percentage are broken, what percentage is trash, what percentage are whole kernels. And then it's going to use that as the, as the threshold or the barometer to determine if an adjustment is necessary. So once I set that, I need to kind of maintain my normal, quote unquote normal, or whatever I set the combine at ground speed so that the combine can learn those settings. That's what makes this superior over the old loss monitor is it doesn't just take a snapshot, it takes about 15 minutes and watches a complete round and so we can have a better idea and understanding of what okay means and acceptable means when we're talking about the losses and then the grain quality uh, concerns that we have. Now as we're doing this, we can go into this button called history, okay? And it'll say performance. So we'll go to the performance button and along the bottom here, it's going to have a line or a line, a bunch of line graphs, and it's going to be telling me how I've been doing over the last 30 minutes. So this is 30 minutes ago, 25 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, so on up to the current time. So as I'm harvesting, the lines will show me how I'm doing for separator loss. So if it's an orange line on the top, it's separator loss. If it's kind of a light blue line, it'll be shoe loss. If it's a purple line, it shows me what my tailings volume looks like. 
Same thing down on here on, for quality. So the cameras, again, they can identify what is a whole kernel, what's a broken kernel, what's trash, what's not, those kinds of things. So if I've got an orange line, you know, that's going to tell me, you know, how much broken grain do I have? Or if it's a blue line, it's going to tell me light foreign material. So I'll be able to look at this over a period of 30 minutes to really give myself, how am I trending? So if my separator loss is coming down, I know I'm trending better and the adjustments I've been making are working. If they're trending the other way and they're going up, then I know that maybe I've got some, some additional adjustments I need to make. The throughput up here, this kind of gives me an idea of how much material is coming in the machine. Uh, basically in a bushels per hour or bushels per second type of type of thing. So that just lets me know that, okay, well maybe over here I had really low separator loss, but I had really low throughput. So either I wasn't driving very fast or I was in a very light yielding area of the field. And then I get over here, I notice my separator loss is a little higher, closer to the current time. And I notice my throughput is a lot higher. So again, maybe I've sped the combine up and, and maybe, uh, or, or it could be I'm driving the same speed, but I'm in, a, I'm in better corn. So I can use all this information to help me process and understand what's going on with the machine and, and what adjustments I potentially can make. So now, um, also I can go into my live camera. So I can hit my live camera and I can actually see the grain going by the, by the camera, whether it's my grain camera, my tailings camera, or right now I've got it in a both configuration. So the top half of this would be my grain. The bottom half would be my tailings. If I just want to look at grain, I would simply select it. And then I can turn my grain analysis on, and then it will actually, by color, identify what, what those brokens look like, what that trash looks like. Um, obviously, you're going to be able to detect that with the human eye, but it's also, if you're not really watching that intently, you can see by the color, you know, what kind of percentage are broken, what kind of percentage is heavy trash, or whatever it might be. I also have on those cameras, as they're looking in there, those, those lenses could potentially uh, become uh, obstructed with debris or, or some kind of crop material. And it will tell you it'll have a okay, a moderate, or a severe. Um, at the moderate position, it could potentially reduce the effectiveness of the cameras. And then the severe, obviously, you're definitely gonna have some issues uh, with that. So that's your camera page. So now, once you've got all that on and, and auto maintain is working, the machine may go ahead and it may go ahead and make some adjustments on its own. So if I go back into my ICA2 and I go back into my history, if it notices that we, one of the separator loss or shoe loss areas or the broken grain areas has gotten outside of that green area, again, that's what it was learning. That green area is what it was learning during that 15 minute time period once you turn the, the system on. So if it notices something has gotten outside of those parameters, the combine is going to try to adjust for it. So what you'll see on the home screen is you'll see one or more of these adjustments. So your concave, your rotor, whatever, you may see one of those or more turn blue. And if they turn blue, that means that the combine has adjusted them. And it's making an adjustment to try to improve the performance of the machine. If you want to see what that is, just go back into your ICA2. You'll go back into your history. And then at the top, it'll say adjustments. Now it's going to show you what adjustments it's making. It'll say, okay, I adjusted the concave six millimeters open and I slowed the rotor down uh, 20 RPMs. And then over here, it's going to tell you why. So it'll say broken grain. And then it will also over here in the right side, it will tell you how long ago it made that adjustment. So it might say, open the concave six, slowed the rotor down 20, that was for broken grain, and I did it three minutes and 28 seconds ago. Okay, then you can look at your history and see, okay, three minutes ago would be about right in here. Yeah, that I had a line or something that was getting out of whack. Was it starting to come back down? And you can see if it was making a difference. And then the combine is going to also evaluate that, that adjustment. So if it slowed that rotor down and opened that concave up, and it saw the, the grain quality start getting better, coming back down into into the green area, then it may leave that adjustment. It, it may make it permanent and leave it, leave it in there as, a, as an actual setting. However, remember those priorities. If I have grain loss set higher than broken grain, and then I notice 
the combine notices that, well, my broken grain got better, but my separator loss got up out of whack, it'll take that adjustment back out because you said losses were more important than broken grain. So the system works together um, and looks at all factors much like you would um, to try to determine that. Although it's looking at these things all the time and it's watching them all the time and it's evaluating these trends. So with the system, you really don't ever have to look at it if you don't want to. You can let, them, you can let the system work and you don't have to give it really any input to make that happen. But it will alert you by turning one of these blue uh, or more blue if it's made an adjustment. Again, they, uh, I wanna go over a couple last buttons before we wrap it up. So I've got my buttons down here below the screen. Um, so this is my scroll. I can scroll buttons here. So I've got about four different ways. I've got, I've got, or three different ways. I've got my scroll wheel. I've got this button. I've got this button. And then I also, I do have four ways. I can actually swipe it like an iPad. So there's four ways I can scroll my screen. This will take me directly to my headers page. This will take me directly to my, my uh, settings page. Here is my engine settings page. So it kind of tells me what my debris filter, what my power meter, all those kinds of things. Here's my grain handling page. Again, this is where my moisture correction's at. I can do, go directly to my yield calibration from here. And I can, I can set that uh, full or empty level for my grain tank if it's not matching up uh, to what my grain tank actually is. If you've got that power cast tailboard, here's where I can adjust my width. So if I want to spread more, I just simply increase the spread. Or if that bias I was talking about, I can bias it to the left or I can bias it to the right or I can have it directly in the center. This one is my fold. So here I've got the folding grain tank. Your folding corn head will also be here if you've got that header equipped on the combine. Here are my cameras. So I've got all the cameras. If I have uh, some video cameras behind me for going down the road or those kinds of things. Um, this would be for your Bluetooth phone. This would be for your radio adjustments, um, your light package. Uh, here's where I can go directly to all my climate settings. Again, this button down here, this is all those, all those set up for my hydro handle, all those configurable buttons. And then the last one will take me directly to my totals page. So the last thing I want to talk about is active yield. Now, there's a lot of questions about active yield. What's it actually doing? Well, basically what it is, it's just constantly calibrating as you're harvesting under normal conditions. So to get to active yield, I'm going to go to my menu button and I'm going to go up here to calibrate and I've got active yield right here. Okay, so active yield, I just simply turn it on and I'm going to let it do its thing. So once I drain that grain tank, all the way empty below those pads that you'll see in the green tank, it will start a new calibration load. Now it's going to wait till you get about 6,000 pounds or 6,500 pounds in the tank and then it's going to take a sample. And as it takes those sample readings, those will count up right here where it says accepted samples. Now I want to be as consistent as I can, um, but if for some reason the, the system said, you know, that wasn't a very good calibration, Maybe you stopped and started a couple times. Maybe you're on a really uh, steep slope. Maybe it was really inconsistent yield. It'll just simply ignore that sample. And the next time you empty the grain tank, it'll start over. Well, let's say that you emptied the grain tank and there was only about 2,000 pounds in there and you wanted to top off the cart. So you went ahead and topped off the cart. Well, it didn't get to it 6,000 pounds. So again, it's just gonna ignore that sample. When you get the tank empty, it'll start a new one. So it pretty well takes care of itself. You don't have to harvest any different to make active yield work. A couple things I wanna bring up. You need to have at least 15 accepted samples in there before you really start getting too carried away about trying to put offsets or corrective, corrective action in there. And you also wanna have at least three or four of these bars lit up. So if I've only got one or two, that means I don't really have enough good calibrations in there uh, of those accepted samples for it to be very accurate. Once I get that third or fourth bar down here lit up, I'm, I should be getting relatively accurate and then I can start making some evaluations of what, of what, I, of what I'm looking for uh, or if I need to take some correction. Um, so that's active yield. There's really not a lot for you to do with it. Um, you may have the question, well, can I run a couple yield cows to try to get the system 
you know, the, to get it to dial in a little quicker? And the answer to that is yes. If you'd like to do some calibrations like we've done before, you know, again, do your normal harvesting speed, do, um, you know, maybe a half, half speed and a three quarter speed, and then maybe one that's a little faster than normal. You can certainly do all that and it will help the system get there quicker and, and get there a little bit more accurately. But even with that said, you still need to wait until you have at least 15 accepted samples before you go ahead and start to evaluate how the system's doing. So let's say you wanna, you wanna do those yield cows. So I need to turn active yield off to go ahead and allow me to do uh, a normal yield cow. So once I turn it off, I'm gonna go back to my calibrations and I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom and I'm gonna go to yield calibration, okay? So what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring up a page that looks similar kind of to what active yield did. So what I'm ready to take that sample, I'm gonna hit record and then I'm gonna hit start. Now once I hit start, this little bar right here as I start to harvest is gonna to start to go up. Once it gets up into this darker green area, then I've harvested enough to go ahead and make my sample or to take my sample and take my weight. When I hit stop, it'll actually allow me to put that, that weight in. Now I've got something new here that I didn't have in the past and that is my mass flow rate. So this kind of gives me an, you know, a, a, um, a visual reference to how much stuff I'm running in the machine. So maybe when I'm running my normal speed, it's over here kind of in this area as far as how, you know, how full the, the flow rate is. So then I can see visually when I go to a half rate, I can see it's here. And then if I do a three quarter rate, it'll be here so that I know I'm properly varying my speed as I do each calibration uh, so that I have separate loads at separate speeds. Again, once I, once I hit stop, I'll put my weight in and I've done my normal calibration just as I normally would. So there's not a lot of differences there. It's just kind of how you get to it. So again, that's all found under the menu button and then the cow button. And then yield cows at the top, at the bottom. And then active yield is gonna be up here towards the top. I'm gonna to turn active yield back on. And uh, that way this combine is gonna be good to go. So again, you don't have to do any manual calibrations with active yield. Uh, if you'd like to though, it's certainly available for you to do that. So that's kind of an overview of our Gen 4 and the S700 and some of the changes that they've made. Hopefully this will help you get started. And as always, if you have questions, you can call us at Sloan Implement or on our call center. That call center number is 217-693-6209 or you can call Sloan Implement at 1-800-745-4020. Thank you and have a safe and happy harvest.